And now it's time to go to Wembley for the 1989 FA Cup final. It was a Merseyside event, a fitting memorial to the Hillsborough tragedy, bringing together Everton and Liverpool. A capacity crowd joined in the Liverpool anthem. Once again, respects were paid to the 95 who perished at the semi-final. In the commentary box are Trevor Brooking and John Motson. For Everton, number three, Pat Van Den Howe and number 11, Kevin Sheedy, were both past fit. Sheedy, along with number four, Kevin Ratcliffe, number seven, Trevor Stephen, and number nine, Graham Sharp, all playing in their fourth FA Cup final in six seasons. And altogether, there are six survivors from the last All-Merseyside final in 1986. But only four of Liverpool's 11 remain from that final. Grobola, Nickel, Whelan and Hansen, while the match winner three years ago, Ian Rush, is a £2.8 million substitute. Nine of the side, though, were here last year when they lost to Wimbledon, and nobody will be keener to make up for that defeat than John Aldridge, number eight, who missed a penalty. Liverpool, remember, unbeaten since New Year's Day. 22 League and Cup matches, 19 wins, three draws. That's the sequence that Everton are up against. And a huge roar as the kickoff on a beautiful Wembley top. Steve Tingley, the groundsman, and his staff have worked hard again to produce this surface. That's Ratcliffe for Everton. Steve Nicol for Liverpool. Hansen. There's Beardsley. Little touch back. This is Nevin. Houghton, Watson. Two vastly experienced goalkeepers out there today. And they could have quite a part to play. Neville Southall and Bruce Grobelard. Nevin. Bracewell to Stephen. Good ball. Vanden Howe, the left back. Plays it in towards Nevin. Good skill by Pat Nevin. This is uh, Tony Cotty, and it was Gary Ablett that conceded the corner. And Everton make the stronger start. Dangerous and hooked away by Steve McMahon. Just guarding the post. Forward by Ratcliffe. Nevin seeing plenty of the ball in this opening few minutes. Bracewell. And it was a good header by Steve Nicholl, it had to be. Everton had a man over on the far side. This is a tight, tigerish start by Everton. Ratcliffe. But it's Whelan now for Liverpool to Nicholl. McMahon, a former Evertonian himself, gets some uh, predictable booing from the Everton fans. Just wonder what part the heat down there is going to play today. That was Watson with Aldridge. Sharp working well. Bracewell. 
Vanden Howe. Trevor Stephen, will the uh, heat mean a lot of conserving of energy, do you think, Trevor, early on? I think over the 90 minutes, uh, it'll help the game because you know, Merseyside derbies are usually pretty hectic, aren't they? Not much space, but uh, there's no way they're going to scamper around for 90 minutes, closing down people. And it will give a little bit more space, I think, for the ball players, hopefully. And uh, I mean, Everton has settled down very well. In a big match like that, it's always nice to get a few good early touches. And I think most of the Everton lads have had a good touch early on, which will help them. This is Nickel looking for McMahon. Good through ball. He got away from Ratcliffe. Oh, and John Aldridge in a great position. And Liverpool have scored in their first attack. And John Aldridge, the man who missed a penalty here last season in the cup final, didn't take long to make up for it. The ball played through was for McMahon, and it caught Everton. Ratcliffe was out manoeuvred there. The ball into Aldridge was superb, and his finish was clinical. Only four minutes gone, and John Aldridge scores his 30th goal of the season in major competitions for Liverpool. And lays the ghost of a year ago. And it really was their first attack, Trevor. <laughs> well, I said it. Well, they must have been pleased, Everton. The door have got a good touch, but John Aldridge was showing that your first touch should be a goal, because I think that was his first touch in the match near enough, and he tucked it in the net. But a great move, great counter-attack, and uh, really must rock Everton on their heels, but a typical piece of uh, clinical John Aldridge finishing. It was a terrific run by McMahon from the middle of the field, because to get beyond Ratcliffe, who's one of the quickest in the game in that position, was some achievement. It, it opened up the play completely, and that was typical Liverpool. The early ball, and Aldridge finishing in style. Sharp. And Sheedy to McDonald. Sharp's there again, so was Hansen. Bracewell was following up, Houghton got to him first. And Liverpool playing very much on their counter-attack. But how threatening they look when they break out. Barnes. Oh, and that's Aldridge again! From Barnes. Beautiful ball, this by John Barnes. He curled it in menacingly. And Aldridge, who's been doing well with his head too recently, might have had his second. Sharp with Hansen. There's no doubt who won that battle. Whelan. Seems to me now that Barnes is getting more and more of the ball. Staunton. Keeping it simple. Whelan. Tends to be the Liverpool way. McMahon. And now Nicholl. There's always a man in a red shirt, it would seem, to receive the ball. Four waiting in the middle at the moment. McMahon. Whelan. And he's got Barnes in. Oh, too far ahead of Aldridge in the six-yard box. But John Barnes, in this last five or six minutes, Trevor, has certainly become a very dangerous customer. A great through ball from Ronnie Whelan. But what, and the cross as well. What we didn't see was John Barnes go towards Ronnie Whelan in a sharp little five-yard sprint, which took a couple of defenders, and then he checked and made the run, which Whelan found him inside the fullback. In fact, it was Pat Nevin who was called out in the end. And, a little bit softer with the ball across the goal, and John Aldridge might well have had his second goal. But again, in those situations, Liverpool opening up the Everton defence, whereas Everton in that same stage of the field unable to do so. Just bear in mind, Everton's uh, first choice right back, Ian Snowden, unfit for this final. This is Sharp, but Vanden Howe is fit on the other flank here. 
and Sharp's in there. And uh, found room to get in a clean header, Graham Sharp. John Barnes discovered not very far from here a few years ago playing for a local club Sudbury Court by uh, Watford for whom he played in the FA Cup final against uh, Everton in 84 and was on the losing side as he was last year against Wimbledon Sharp's touch Cotty's offside found the two million pound price tag quite a burden on his own admission Tony Cotty he has scored 18 goals for Everton but hasn't enjoyed the most consistent of first seasons at Goodison but here's a man who's enjoyed a most consistent season Aldridge Beardsley Houghton probing as always oh Aldridge in again Well, again, twice Everton were caught so flat. First of all, the ball down the line to Aldridge, uh, which was played back inside. And then here again, you see they hold the 18-yard box. See Ratcliffe Deer standing just on the 18-yard box. So when the through ball goes, they're caught so flat. And really, John Aldridge, I think so surprised to get the space, should have put it on target. I'm told that down on the touchline bench, the temperature has risen to 90 degrees. Just like uh, Stephen with the through ball. I was going to say it's more like Guadalajara than uh, Wembley in terms of the temperature and the, the weather we've got here. Nevin. Forward by McDonald, Robillard's coming out to meet Sharp. And this could be interesting, Sheedy's in a good position. Sheedy, Hansen blocked, and Robillard must have been relieved. Certainly Hansen let him know what he thought about that uh, particular <laughs> advance. It was a typical Robillard excursion, that. Stephen. Nevin. A minute left in the first half. Watson for Everton, who are pressing now. Stephen. Well, Grobola hadn't had too much to do. I don't know whether he was getting a little bored back there, but he went a long way and was out of his ground for a few dangerous moments. There's always somebody there, isn't there, plugging up any gaps. And, and at the moment... Everton playing across and in front of the Liverpool defence rather than behind them and uh, at the moment Liverpool totally controlling the game. and stress recently who are joyful and buoyant because their team thanks to John Aldridge's goal after just four minutes lead in this all Merseyside FA Cup final and I wouldn't imagine you'd argue too much with that Trevor but apart from those opening few minutes uh, before in fact Liverpool got the goal uh, then really from then on they've got stronger and stronger the Everton defensive has really looked at sixes and sevens very flat and even when they're in possession of the ball, they've been just booting it sort of long balls and giving the ball away. Whereas Liverpool looks so composed, particularly Alan Hansen at the back, bringing it out from defence and keeping possession. And, and as the half has gone on, they have looked better and better. So at half-time, 
It's the Reds in front against the Blues by one goal to nil. Again, in this uh, heavy atmosphere, high temperatures, there'll be times when they try and slow it down, Liverpool in particular. Barnes header to Aldridge. The teams drew here in the uh, League Cup final a few years ago. In their first ever all Merseyside Wembley meeting. Here's Hansen, one of the survivors of that. Well played. Nickel. In again to Houghton, who's always threatening. Barnes is a long way away on the left, but he's the freest player. Well found. And brings Southall down to the near post. Good distribution by Ray Houghton there, and John Aldridge waiting. On the six-yard line, Liverpool don't put many players in there for corners. Prefer to play it short and pick up the passing game again. Barnes. Houghton. Offside, Barnes. Now, Houghton delivered that quite beautifully. And Barnes was perfectly ready here with his left. But it was slightly deflected off the defender anyway, which made it an even better save. Telling the goal, Gleesh here, obviously deciding Liverpool do need a G up. Yes, the goal scorer is going off. John Aldridge applauded. Going off this year in rather different circumstances to last time round against Wimbledon. Because this time his team are a goal up. And a big reception for the fellow who scored two goals in this Merseyside FA Cup final three years ago. Kenny Dalglish congratulates his goal scorer today, but uh, Ian Rush back from Juventus and now back at Wembley. It's got about uh, 18 minutes, unless there's extra time, of course. Nevin. Steven. Chances here. McCall's there. And Grobola wasn't sure. And it was Ian Wilson who got closest to the loose ball. The two subs were both involved in there. Grobola had an escape. Not for the first time. Offside. Just shows you the difference by get, getting the crossing from the byline makes because it, it's whipped in comes from that different angle and it causes all sorts of problems for the defence. That's the first time so far they've managed to get to the byline. And it was Steven really, wasn't it? Watson's up there with Sharp. That was Watson. And Liverpool has stretched. It's Van den Howe. Back in again. Sharp's up there. Danger. Nevin! If he'd made contact there, it would possibly have been 1-1. I think that's what you call handbags from seven yards, yeah? This was the earlier cross. Trevor Stephen whips it in, and the hand going up from Stuart McCall. I just Stuart McCall just put Bruce Grobelaar off. John Aldridge and Kenny Dalglish unable to affect it much from there. And Everton haven't given up hope. Nevin looks for Cotty. Sharps in the middle, and so is Big Dave Watson now playing as a full-time forward. Nevin again, and still it's Nevin. Pills for handball, referee says play on. Nevin again, Watson wants it long. He's got past Staunton. Sharp's there, so is Nickel. It's an Everton corner with two minutes to go. Now can Watson or Sharp get on the end of this?
shots, flick. They appeal for handball again, but it's a corner again. They're feeding it in. Ian Wilson talking to Joe Worrell. All he'll get is a corner. They're feeding it into the near post where Liverpool don't like it. Sharps the player to flick it on. Watson's coming in behind him. McDonald is also there. Wilson, no. Behind him was Staunton. Stephen. And still Watson stays up. And that's not the sort of ball... That's the sort of ball Phil Thompson wanted <laughs> and Kenny Dalgleish, but not what Everton would have expected from that position. And it's very tense down there. We make it about a minute of normal time. And here we have an intrusion that we don't need. And the players doing their best to rid us of that offender. Well, Liverpool were holding their breath a bit there. Grobola has a chance now to clear the lines. Everton have certainly had the better of the last half hour, as you would expect for a team who've been a goal down for so long. Watson heads it forward to Cotty. Sharp. Chances here. Nevin. And outside him a chance too. And Grobola. And it's got in. McCall was in there. the goal that brings Everton level and almost certainly forces extra time it couldn't have come any closer to the end Liverpool had one hand on the cup and it looks like another half hour And there goes Beardsley. That was quite amazing, wasn't it? The two, they paid the penalty, Liverpool, just sitting back these last 20 minutes, holding on to that 1-0 lead. Good run by Pat Nevin. Davy Watson it was who crossed it, and Stuart McCall pounced on the slip-up. And there it is. It's extra time in the All-Merseyside Cup final. And Stuart McCall scores in the dying seconds for Everton. A quite extraordinary finish to the 90 minutes. Liverpool looked as though they were going to hang on. But Everton caught them in the last attack. So, the excitement shared in the Royal Box. And the Everton fans delirious. Now, just what that might have done for Liverpool's season, I don't know. They've begun to look rather tired. Dave Watson fired it in. Grobola got a hand to it. And McCall was the player who scored. And they can't believe it down there. Here's Whelan. Nickel. McCall, the goal scorer. Cotty. Here's Nevin. Now is the psychological balance now with Everton. Cotty. Oof, maybe it is.
Here's Nickel. And there goes Rush. Dave Watson now back in his defensive position, having spent uh, a lot of time in attack as Everton fought to save the game. That was his cross that brought the goal. Forward by Venison, then a touch by Houghton. This is Whelan, Beardsley, Rush, Barnes. Got to start all over again now, ready Liverpool, Nickel. That comes off McDonald. Well, our watch said 44 minutes, 57 seconds when that goal went in. Couldn't have been closer. Nickel. Oh, there's Rush in there. Rush! Goal! Ian Rush. Liverpool back in front. Five minutes into extra time. And Ian Rush, scorer of two against Everton here three years ago, swivels on that, shakes off Ratcliffe and beats Southall. A typical Rush effort. And it's come at a timely moment for Liverpool. Great piece of opportunism, but you have to say again that he was very loosely marked. Uh, great ball in again from Steve Nicol. Doesn't matter if he's playing on the right or the left, he can still clip those selling passes into the penalty area. Push, Ablett on Sharp. Well, Colin Harvey's seen his team save this match once in what would have had to have been their luck was the last attack of the uh, 90 minutes but then go behind again almost as soon as extra time started Ratcliffe Watson's up here's McCall again oh yes it's 2-2 two -two. and it's the same player Stuart McCall Dropping it wide of Grubbelar for the second equaliser. Headed out first of all, but look how McCall got that down and the perfect volley with the right foot, Trevor. Well, he's not having a bad afternoon, is he, since coming on? Alan Hansen heads it out. It drops and loops in. Bruce Grubbelar never quite going to get there. And again, we're all two all and... Who knows what the remainder of this extra time is going to bring forth. We've also had, unfortunately, uh, only in celebration, I ought to say, Everton supporters on the pitch after both their goals, which is not what Wembley wants to see. And the stewards have got, again, or did have, quite a lot of work to do. That's one of the penalties, I'm afraid, of taking the fences down. And the point has to be made, even in a mood of uh, jubilation, which is what... Uh, Everton were enjoying at that moment. This is Sharp. And now Trevor Stephen. Wide to McDonald. Well, this morning, Stuart McCaw wasn't even sure he would be in the 13. There were suggestions that Wayne Clark might be on the bench. He'd only ever scored two goals for the club before today. And now he's twice revived his team in this FA Cup final. Out. Whelan. McMahon. Barnes. Rush! Goal! 3-2 Liverpool! 
Ian Rush gets his second. And this now becomes one of the most dramatic FA Cup finals of recent times. Beautiful ball by Barnes, deftest of headers by Rush, steered it wide of Southall. And Rush repeats his feat of three years ago. Wonderful John Barnes cross, a great Ian Rush header, but goodness me, the marking again. Ian Rush got between Kevin Ratcliffe at the far post, David Watson at the near post, and it's gone in between the two of them, and unmarked Ian Rush has got his second goal. Same as last time, of course, in 1986 when he got two. I think Craig Johnson was the other scorer. You're quite right, and Ian Rush has now more than that beaten Dixie Dean's great old record. He's now got 21 goals in Merseyside derby matches. But here are Everton again. Stevens ploughing forward. Well, will this go down as one of the classics? As Trevor says, the goals are being scored partly because of, uh, by these two teams' high standards, sloppy defensive play to an extent, but the drama is unabated. Ian Rush here, scoring the kind of goal which one came to expect of him, in the right place, doesn't get as many with his head as he would with his feet, but... Uh, Always on the prowl, and John Barnes, the perfect delivery. He was between the two defenders, and Southall was wrong-footed. John Aldridge bites his nails. He scored the first goal, and it's funny, isn't it? He was a few seconds away from becoming the man whose goal won the FA Cup, and now he won't have that privilege. It may go to his look-alike Ian Rush. Here's Hansen. Oh, good touch. It was Beardsley to Barnes. Now it's Rush again. And here's Houghton with a chance for 4-2. What a good stop by Neville Southall. He kept his team in the game there for sure from Ray Houghton. Well, this would have killed Everton off for sure. And Southall saves with his feet. Here in extra time, it's been one of, like one of those old-fashioned matches of 20 or 30 years ago when defences opened up and goals came aplenty, rather than the more sterile one nils that we see perhaps more recently. Now, can John Barnes add to that total? He's kept the ball in, he's got Rush in the middle. Still Barnes. And Southall makes the save. As he's made several, Barnes deprived there. Venison, Rush, it can still work for Barnes here. Ratcliffe in the way, Beardsley, good save, he touched that. Well, in my view, he did anyway. And it would appear Joe Worrell goes along with that. Barnes short to Nicola, and the atmosphere in the stadium is one to behold at the moment. More of that in a second. Nickel flags up on this side for offside against Rush, I think. The referee's given the corner because he hasn't seen the linesman. There's going to be an offside here. There are people having come in, in the most orderly fashion, I must say, right down to the area behind the stewards. We hope there won't be a pitch invasion, even though it would be a jubilant one. But uh, that might be tempting fate a little. Because uh, there are so many fans who've moved down, and uh, Wembley's going to need all the stewards it's got to keep the pitch clear. Everton haven't given up, though. Sharp. And again, Sharp. Watson's up there. Gather there are 1,200 stewards on duty here today. This is Nickel, And have 
Everton at last been put into the position of runners-up. Has Kenny Dalglish's team finally laid their hands on the FA Cup? The call. Foul from behind, Beardsley. That was panic. Now, can Everton do it again? We are now in stoppage time. Well, there's no Sheedy there now, of course. It's going to be Stephen. Can he make it 3-3 and force a replay? Or can McDonald? Well, it was close. From Neil McDonald. And there were a few people reaching for their diaries then. This would, I imagine, be Everton's last chance. Robillard had it covered. Whistles all round the stadium. And Liverpool have won the FA Cup, the first leg of the double, and perhaps softened the pain that so many of their supporters have been through recently. And in a fine, dramatic final, surely lifted the spirits of a whole city and of the game of football. Neville Southall has just sat down by his goalpost and tried to contemplate all that's gone on. Playing no part at all at the moment in the celebrations and commiserations as Ronnie Whelan, in his first season as Liverpool captain, a player who a year ago wasn't even in the 13 for the match against Wimbledon, walks up to receive the FA Cup from Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent, who, with her reported liking for Liverpool, will enjoy presenting it to him, perhaps nearly as much as Ronnie Whelan enjoys receiving it. <laughs> Liverpool are FA Cup winners for the fourth time, and they hope that the championship is still to come to give them their second double. That may well depend on Arsenal, we shouldn't overlook that. But for the moment, after the tribulations and the commiseration of the last five weeks, there are smiles back on Liverpudlian faces. And even though there will be those who feel it's all a bit too soon, one day, sooner or later, this famous club had to get back on its feet and the players had to go back to do what they do best. And they've certainly achieved that today in a fluctuating final to which Everton contributed considerably after starting the match poorly in the 90 minutes but coming good at the end, and again briefly, an extra time. So Kevin Ratcliffe, his fourth FA Cup final as a captain, itself a record, but for the third time, he's a loser. So, what a dramatic climax to five weeks of disaster and inquest and contemplation and sympathy and mourning the spirits are lifted in and around Liverpool now the villagers are